I could drive a Tesla. Tesla. Like, just as Do you just like casual. Tesla? What, what happened? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, again, that's the pinnacle of uh, electric cars right now. I mean, if it's not a Tesla, people don't want it. Yeah. I work in the rental car company business right now, so... um. Okay. Yeah, Can so, you turn me up, please? Yeah, yeah. So I'm driving a lot of different cars, and um, I, I feel like... Those Model 3s? You like this? You're driving a Model 3, right? That's the SUV one? No, no that's a not little, a Model Y. Oh, that's a, that's the, the Y. Compact. Yeah, the, the small joint. Yeah, those, those are right. They're all the same, really. I mean, it's just accommodations for those who, you know, can't afford the bigger ones. Mm. Yeah. Lord. I like how minimalistic they are. Yeah, but we, you know, it's just talking about, like, the aftermath. Like, once you uh, have to, once you have to get work done to them and they're not warranty, that's the problem. Oh. That they're expensive. Because you're saying, expensive. like, if you're to replace your battery, that's 15000 15000 you said? Yeah, 15000 <laughs> But the problem is some of the issues are not the battery. Like, they present as the battery, but it might be just a little piece behind the battery that is causing the issue. But they don't, they don't care. They don't really. diagnose. They just throw parts at the car. They're like, oh, it's under warranty or whatever. Tesla said, manufacturing says, when you see this issue, you replace all these parts. It's 15 grand. What's up? <laughs> mm. so but and the problem is is they don't allow mom and pop shops to work on them so like you could like let's say i fix cars and you bring me a tesla and i'm like yo i've been watching youtube i know blah blah i know what's what the problem is i can't get the parts they won't sell me the parts they won't you mm. know what i mean so mm. that's they got a they have a lock on all of that so I'm just saying, man. I used to be a big fan of Tesla. I wanted a, I wanted a Model S so bad, and then I wanted that Model X. And then Elon Musk just decided to be who he is, you know. And I can't, I can't support, I can't support people who are racist and sexist, misogynistic, and capitalistic. And he's racist. Oh yeah, South African. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we we know the history there, but like, <laughs> yeah. Course, I mean, he he is on the older side, so. So, yeah, I mean, but we do we know like the beliefs of all the other car owners, or you know, well, that's fine. I, as long as I don't know, it's fine. But once I know, you know, we gotta do better. <laughs> we gotta do better, right? <laughs> once I know, yeah. Once I know, I mean, shit. And that's gonna touch on something I did want to talk about uh, for this episode of the Culture of Misfits. Welcome back. Yeah, we're just we just jump in. I hope you don't have any questions, C's, because because you just he's a pro now. You don't got no questions. Yeah, questions like what? I'm like, I don't know, man. You <laughs> it's know, been a while. Though. It's been, yo, it was 2023 the last time you was here. Yeah, what was it the, the summer? It was the summer, right? I don't know, man. I don't, I, don't track, know. I don't be tracking shit. I'm just saying, you know, you could have came in and just been a whole new person. Like, yo, man, these are things I don't want to talk about, but. That's true. Kind of. Kind of, kind of a different person. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of time passed, you know? Yeah. It, uh, I guess. I mean, yeah. But anyway, welcome back. Let me do it. Let me do it right. I am DJ Silk, and to the right of me, Israel, aka Brown Sugar. There we go. And to the left of me, we have Caesar Rodney, aka C's. There we go. That's, he's up here schooling us on Teslas. He's like, he just casually dropped that here when I dropped the Tesla. It's so okay with me, I think. <laughs> you know what? You <laughs> painting narratives right now. Now I'm about to be the go-to guy about the Teslas. <laughs> I'm winning too. <laughs> uh, I mean, but I, have you, bro? Have you driven a Tesla? No, I haven't. No, it's an experience. Have you? No, and and a friend of mine got one, and she was like, "Yeah, anytime you want to drive it." And at the time, I'm like, "No, I only want to drive it when I'm ready to buy one." Mm -hmm. And now I kind of regret. I I've driven know. in one, like um, when I yeah. was in. Written. You've written. Written. One. Yeah. yeah. There you go. What I say? You've driven in one. That was like really extra. Uh, sorry. Extra. I rode. Yeah. I was picked up in an Uber you when were... I was in Las Vegas, and it was a Tesla. Model it was three. Nice. I don't remember what model was, but it was cool to see like on the screen, like he had it like wherever we were going, and it would show like people walking or a bike or. And that was the basic price of an Uber, or were you trying to do like the X? No, it was just a regular. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, it's about to be like that now. Mm -hmm. You're about to start getting picked up in electric cars. Yeah. Yeah. And people just really fighting it. I get so tired of arguing with people about this shit. They're fighting what? The whole thing. The they're they're gonna raise the price of electricity. I'm like, um, just like they raised <laughs> the price of gas. Yeah. Like, as as a matter of fact, so if, let's just say society collapses, right? 
and we we all have electric cars, right? Before society collapses, here we are. Shit's all fucked up. How how much how easy would it be if you had the choice between trying to find gas or generate electricity? What would seem a little bit easier to do? I hear what you're saying, but they're saying that right now, if everyone was to go to go electric, there's no way to power everyone. Like, we don't have enough of that energy source or like a way to capture. I don't know how to explain it. Capture the energy yeah. source to power all electric cars. Right, 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 right. So basically they're saying like, oh, if everyone is electric by, I don't know, 2030, that's impossible right now. So the the part of the equation that they're they're missing, that they, they're missing out on is we have plenty of capacity to generate electricity. What we don't have capacity is to store it. Mm. Right. Okay. So I'm like, what? Like, what is? Like, I'm starting to think, what does electricity even come from? Like, <laughs> <laughs> from the power plant. From the power plant. <laughs> so, like, it's either they either have coal generator, like burning coal, like wind, wind. So, like, a nuclear nuclear power creates steam, which turns turbines, which generates the electricity, spins it, and it goes out. It's not stored. It's like it's made on demand. Okay. So that's that's how generally it works. But so the problem is, so at night, electricity is cheap because they don't have the ability to store it. So they end up burning electricity off. Mm. So that's why the rates go down at night. So if you have an electric car right now, you get a discount for having an electric car, like having a supercharger on your house, but it charges at night. So it's extra cheap. But with the, the development of more battery storage, like the idea is rail has her electric car, right? It's 10 years old. The battery's done. Like, it doesn't, it can't push enough electricity for the car. It can still store electricity. So she could take her battery and then use that as house battery storage for her solar panels. Or she could sell it to the, elect. they could be taken to the electric company. Now they have battery farms. Now they can store electricity. And so then, or we can have more solar panels. You have solar panels, all this stuff. So that's part of the equation. So yeah, you're right. People are right. If we were to do it right now without having the batteries capacity storage, then yes, it would be a problem. Problem. But that's not, it all works together. Just like when they made the first gas car, there was no fucking gas stations. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, so. Yeah, and that's, it's an infrastructure thing. I mean, that's the biggest argument I hear. Like, all oh, the infrastructure isn't there, but it's going to get there. I mean, mm-hmm. people just have to buy into it. And that's right. the hardest part of selling it. Yeah. To the old heads, really. I mean, we, we all, go. Yeah. I'm just the saying. Ageism. <laughs> that's what it comes down to, though. That's what it really comes down to, though. That's why he uses it against us. <laughs> nah, nah, you know, it, but I just, it just, people just don't think. Like, they're just so emotional about shit. They're just like, I'm like, man. But I mean, to my original question, gas, if you had to, if you had to refine oil, so you got to find some oil. <laughs> you gotta refine it into gasoline, right? Mm-hmm. How successful do you think the average person is going to be in making that happen? Very little, right? But you know, we do have solar panels. Like you do, we do. Like we, I mean, it would be hard to do. But if you just like stole people's solar panels and <laughs> and harvest it like that, you would have a better shot of getting electricity that way than you would if you were trying to make gas. So that's what I'm saying, electric cars. For the dystopian future. All right, so with Tesla cars, when driving them, the uh-huh. only problem that I've, uh, or the only go. getting used to that I, I needed to, hold on. Everything cut out for me. You're still, you're still good. It's All just right, the cool. headphones, yeah. The only thing I need to get used to when driving a Tesla is the fact that when you step off of the acceleration, the pedal, it, it doesn't coast. It doesn't coast, right? right it doesn't coast. It stops coast. super abruptly. It's what? like almost like you're braking, like it's serious. Have like, you ever bumper cars? Yeah. Have you ever, you, when you let off the thing? Is it, yeah, it stops because it's, 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 that's how it works. That's how electric motors work. That's why they have all that torque. And they all kind of work like that, too, honestly. Yeah. Um, mm. But I feel it more in Teslas and Polestars. Look at that. So you have Fancy to, like, <laughs> let, keep your you put, you keep your feet on it and you let go of it to yeah. slow down the yeah. speed? I guess. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, I mean, that's the idea, I'm sure, if you got used to it, but I'm yeah. not used to it. I'm just... Thinking I can just step off the pedal and brake. Yeah. You're gonna go. So you don't, and then you don't change your brake pads as often mm-hmm. because you're not using, you don't have to brake as much because you're just letting off the gas and the compression from the electric motor slows the car down. That's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, man. It's just change, man. It's just change. Listen, when we were shut down, when nobody was on the road, 
I noticed how the smog went away. Mm -hmm. The little woodland creatures was out doing their thing. The squirrels were squirreling. The foxes were foxing. Everything because people weren't burning fossil fuels driving to and from uh, work and whatnot. So, um, and then as soon as we got back, the smog came back, all that shit. So, like, electric car is kind of, you know, a part of the equation of solving it. So You actually noticed that? Yeah, because I worked the entire time. I was Ubering, so I was I was the one making sure the earth was getting its carbon. <laughs> you were leaving your carbon footprint. I was leaving. I was making up for a whole lot of you. I was, yeah, I was working pretty much seven days a week, 12 hours a day. That's pretty mm-hmm. cool. I mean, I never noticed any of that change. I just saw it on the news, like, oh, like. Yeah, I saw it. Mm-hmm. Everything's filling up everywhere. Yeah, I saw it with my own eyes. I saw the beautiful sunsets, the beautiful sunrises. I saw, like, usually there was no layer of brown smog over Philly that you usually see when you're coming in. Mm. Like, yeah, it was it was air. The air was fresh, you know? So See, that's every day for me. That just seems like natural. I thought that was what it was. When you went out the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, sadly, man. like yeah, no. I mean, that is the norm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it was just like I can't even imagine what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> but you were around for it. I wasn't outside. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was following the rules. He was following. Yeah, man. It was. Listen, man. I saw creatures like. Like, just foxes, and they was walking down streets, city streets, like, mm-hmm. yo, what's going on? Because, like, nobody was outside. So <laughs> Yeah, less vibration, all that, from the cars on the road. Yeah, man. Sure. Yeah, so, <laughs> it, was, it was dope. So, you know, electric cars, yeah, get the Kias are nice. Like, every manufacturer has an electric car now, so. Yeah, what do you think about Dodge, getting rid of all their Chargers, Challengers? And, you well, saw the I, new one, the electrical? They're nice. They're nice. Look, I don't. I'm not a fan of Chargers or yeah. Challengers or any of the Hellcat and muscle cars. They're beautiful. I just hate the way people drive in them. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Like mm-hmm. it really, yeah. like you don't know how many times I almost died working in Philly because these cats is like driving crazy in their Chargers and Challengers. Like they're like they need to relax. Yeah, like where, where are you going? You don't like any adrenaline car. No, I'm just saying I have a bad association with it because I'm, like, trying to live. (laughs) And they're being so reckless with their driving. Yo, yo, sees if you could, like, I know there's a lot of them in the the junkyards. There's a lot of them because these cats were smashing them up, man. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, so I don't, they're beautiful, but no, I'm good. Like, now we're going to have this whole electric thing because once they figure out that electric cars are beastly, like, you know. They go even faster. I know, man. I know. Can't I even know. hear him. Can't even I hear him. I know. <laughs> Yo, the first mm-hmm. guy that I ever picked up that had a, uh, he had a Model S, um, and his wife hit a deer in it, and it, and like it was because the deer could not hear the car coming. Mm. <laughs> it was, so she thought the deer was going to get out of the way. She was like, the deer saw me. Like it was, <laughs> and she was, it just it boom clipped it. So. Yeah. I thought they were supposed to stop when he, like, sent stuff in front of them, no? Clearly, I don't know what his wife was doing, but I took him to the body shop to pick his Tesla up from, you know, because of the damage. (laughs) I feel like electric cars make this weird noise. It's like, I know you've heard it. No. They make a sound, yeah. The first time I ever heard it, I was, like, freaked out. It's like an eerie noise. (sighs) Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm not freaked out about it. What? It's like, well, the first time, the first, not anymore because now I know what it is, but the first time you hear an electric car, it's like this weird noise. Can, what, I didn't what like did it. What did it sound like? <laughs> <laughs> what did it sound like? Can we, can we, uh, can we get another? <laughs> no, I'm not really good at this what, Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But it's almost like a high pitch, like, a like whining. if someone was pushing on an organ, like a what? high pitch, like, you well, you know, I'm, I'm missing many frequencies from my hearing spectrum from all the oh, years well, of abuse. Why. So I probably, you know, I would be the one to get hit by a car, electric car. They're like, you didn't hear the whining sound? Like, yeah, didn't. it's like a ringing, it almost like a ringing. That's how you go out. They're like, damn, he got hit by an electric car. That yeah. motherfucker was on there caping for electric cars, and that's what took him out because he didn't hear it. <laughs> damn, both of y'all got braces. Yeah. I feel yeah. left out. Join the club. <laughs> wow. I talk different. Yeah. I breathe different. I do everything different. Everything different. Don't start. 
I got a question. I'm gonna get rid of mine soon. All right, yeah. you are you in the home stretch? Yeah. yeah. Lucky. It's almost over. It's almost over. Wow. I I've had these for like five years. God damn. Yeah. What damn? What you doing? What am I doing? What, five years? Yeah, I was playing a little bit. COVID happened, doing my stuff. <laughs> that took like a couple years off. And then I wasn't even, um, I was away in Baltimore for college at one point. Okay. Yeah, my orthodontist is down here, so it was a lot. Mm-hmm. That, was, that took like three years off. So, I mean, can't they just be taken off or because they weren't tightened? Because you weren't going to the appointments to get them tightened. Is that what? Is that why they're it still on? They prolonged it. They yeah. prolonged it? Okay. Yeah. All right, I don't know. I just I, go and show up, and they do their thing, man. I thought. <laughs> I would have thought your braces would have gave out by now. Yeah, if I, <laughs> I know. No, it just holds it in place. I know, but the right. cement yeah, that's on there, the practice on there, like, he'd be, he be on stage doing his thing, and it's like, clink, clink, clink. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I feel like these are on here, like, <laughs> they're cemented on here. Yeah, shout out my with the Donis. He got a lot of pretty nurses in there. Words, yeah. <laughs> so words. Yeah, he old guy too. Yeah. Oh, you he know what he's doing too. Yeah, when I worked at Wawa, he came in one day, didn't recognize me, but was flirting with my coworker. Gave her like a weed card or something. I'm like, who is this old man? What? I don't know. What? Uh, a weed card? Yeah, a license? like a license for like, like he sell weed or something too. Like, uh, I don't, oh, he I don't on know, it. Man. These people were different out here. No, that's he's smart. Yeah, he's smart. I'd be doing the same thing if I had the ability. But you're an orthodontist. That's a lot of money already. Like he got his own like practice. Yeah, that's his, it's his name on the building. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. Well, should have been a dentist. <sighs> nah, you know they got a high suicide rate for after they retire. Mm-hmm. Like the highest because people are afraid of the dentist. Like there's a, like a I don't know what the percentage is, but there's a high fear of going to the dentist and that wears on oh, their yeah. psyche. Yeah. So they retire. Like my my periodontist, uh, he was mean too. He was mean. Like for one of the reasons why I I I don't have anxiety about going to the dentist now, but coming up, he was fucking mean. Like just mm. horrible, and he killed himself. Like I don't think he made it six months after he retired. He blew his brains out. I, I don't get the correlation. Like I'm just. Cause it's just a miserable life, man. Yeah. You're just yeah. in people's mouth all day. They don't want you to be in their mouth. All kinds of anxiety and stuff. It's just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's weird. It's weird. I'm just saying. Like, and now we probably just discouraged like a swath of people that have heard this. Like, you know what? I was going to be a dentist, but <laughs> Still be never honest. mind. Never mind. Damn. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. You know what I really should have been? A oh, pilot. Here we go. A pilot. Mm. Yeah. What kind yeah, of pilot? 2020 vision? A plane pilot. What? Like an airline's pli- pilot. Well, I mean, because it's helicopter pilots. Mm. I just want to, like, the fact that they just go wherever they go for their job, and then they have, like, however long type of break, and they just explore the city that they're at. Like, I don't know. That's, that's just really cool to me. You'd be a flight attendant. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no. A stewardess? Yes. A flight attendant. Isn't that the same thing? Yeah. It's fl- it's 2024. It's a flight attendant. Nah. I, I know. If, I, I got a couple of guys that do that, and it's cool. Here it's awesome. Go. Here we go. I'm glad that they get to, like, figure out where go. they like to go into the world. But Here we go. I couldn't be a flight attendant. First of all, I don't want to deal with rude people. I mean, any job, you do have the, you know, rude customers. But it's like, and then I got to serve you, and you being rude. Yeah, that's customer service still. Yeah. Let this plane go down. I'm leaving all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Lord, see, see, it's, it's not, not for me. It's not. It's not too late for you to go get your pilot's license. This is very expensive. Oh, is it? It's very expensive. But I'm just saying, like, as opposed to college or something like some traditional like, mm. you know, matriculation of sorts. Like, why not just be a pilot? Like, I should have just, you know, if I could reverse back time and think about my occupation exactly. Like, yeah. No, because if you reverse time, like that, like, but if you reverse time, then you wouldn't be at this point where you would say, "I would want to be a pilot," because you'd be doing something else. Like your education, your exposure to the world, and and everything that you've gotten to this point got you to this point where you're like, "I should have been a pilot," which you can still be a pilot, nigga. How old are you? <laughs> Three. Twenty-three. Well, oh my god, like so young, a baby. You just yo, you still got Similac dangling from your ear, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you can be a pot. In fact, I just found out a girl that I work with at the Apple store is a helicopter pilot now. Hmm. Like, I just, on TikTok. 
Like, it's funny. I find, I drove past her. She lives down the street. I didn't know she lived down the street from me, right? Yeah. And I had forgotten completely about her. And then she popped up on my TikTok. Because she had gotten, she had abandoned all social media at one point in time. So she's mm-hmm. on my TikTok. I'm like, oh, let me see. Mm-hmm. She's, a, she's a pilot. Like, there's a helicopter joint in Newark. And she's a pilot. Like, this video of her... Flying, flying with a friend, so it's not even like she's with a cat because some people be fronting, you know, they're in there with the uh, the the flight, the the teacher, mm-hmm. the trainer. No, she's flying helicopters by herself. Yeah, she was the teacher. She was the trainer. That's cool. Yeah. yeah so, you, so do we need to start a GoFundMe so you can go to pilot school? Mm. It's a lot, man. And There's if you no don't scholarships or anything, yeah, I was gonna say we can make that happen. Like, damn, without could I actually commit to it? Because, you know, it's like a couple, I believe it's like a couple hundred dollars an hour per hour. Because, you know, planes are expensive. Fuel, all that. Like, yeah. I knew one, I knew someone I went to college with who's a pilot. And he became a pilot a couple of years ago. And, you know, he's on, he flies for a major airline. So you can do it. If he can do it, I know you can do it. Oh, what's up with him? <laughs> yeah. Listen, man, Dell State has a, pilot's, a oh, yeah. pilot's program. You know, you got to be matriculated. I mean, you don't like that part, but yeah, you can go. It's yeah, cool. I mean, it's just all about the timeline. You know, if I could do it in like maybe two years, I'd do it. What if it's three? I'd do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm just saying, man. If you want to be a pilot, you can be a pilot. Something different, you know. All right. I feel I, like not a lot of people think about that. I don't mm-hmm. know. No, they do. And then they see how much it was required to become a pilot. And they're like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> just give me your buddy pass when you become a pilot. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've met a lot of private plane pilots, like, doing the Uber and Lyft thing. Mm. So I'm picking them up. Yeah, like, I've, yeah. And at no point in time did I ever think, oh, this would be a cool existence. Never. No? No. They get a lot of, like, benefits and perks. Yeah, but the thing is, man, when you travel a lot, you end up just wanting to be home. Yeah. Like, there's not a lot of, like, oh, you get to fly to California or whatever, but then you're turning around. Because, like, depending upon what you're doing, like, if you work for a private uh, company or if you're working for an airline, they're just going to have you turn around. They're like, all right, well, you got to fly, you know, to here or there. And then once you hit your eight hours, like, now you got to chill. And you're tired. You've been working the whole time. Like, you're not going to be sightseeing. Like, I'm do 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 Like, you got to, you got, you're just working. So it's not the glamour that you would think it would be. It's still a job. It's a job. Yeah. It's just, except now... When you have a dentist appointment, an orthodontist appointment, now it's very fucking inconvenient because you're across the country and it's like, yo, I got to be back to such and such tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh. I mean, I feel like it's like people who travel for their jobs, you just plan around it. Or it's like rough. when you go away to college, if you go to another state or another country, you have to plan your Well, he could have gotten an orthodontist in Baltimore. Yeah, that too. Yeah. You're stable, but yeah, you go away to school, you're still stable. No, like my dad, my dad traveled all the time for his job. Mm -hmm. Like if he was home on a Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday during the week, it's like, why are you here? What's what's happening? Did you lose your job or something? Because he traveled traveled that much. Mm -hmm. And now in his retirement, yo, he does not want to get on a plane. He doesn't want to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And he's traveled the world like seven times over. Mm -hmm. But he's just like, yo, man, I'm tapped out. Like it's, it's not sweet. It's not sweet like that. It's not. I think it depends on like if you like to fly and like I love to fly. But when you fly, you're flying usually for some pleasure shit. You're not flying to work. You're not flying to go somewhere or flying is your job. Mm -hmm. Like you're that's the difference. It's like people who decide they go on vacation someplace and they're like, I want to move here. It's like, no, you really don't. Because, <laughs> because if one thing, if you could move, like, if I could move to, well, it used to be Miami. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, I can't, I don't know about Florida no more. But if I could move there, it would only be if I could live like I was on vacation. Mm-hmm. Like, if, but just moving there and now I got a job, I'm getting up going to work every day. I got a shop. All the things, like, yeah, I might be in, like, yeah, I'm closer to the beach, you know, closer to the fun. But more than likely, I'm going to have the same energy down there as I have up here to do that kind of stuff. And there are fun things to do up here, and I don't do them. But, yeah. It's, I think it's your personality, because when I lived in Miami, I had a ball. <laughs> How Every long day. did you live in Miami for? A couple months. Yeah, a couple months. But I worked from home, and I went to swim. It depends on what you like to do. Talk to me in two years of, the, the, of you living down there. This, Yes, you knew, and you knew when you were living there that it wasn't, this wasn't permanent. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Right? You knew you were coming back. Maybe. He mad at you for having fun. No. <laughs> nah, I'm just saying, it just depends, being like, realistic. All, to me, all that made me happy was going to swim every day after work. Right. But that's new. Like, of course, everything is new. When something's new, it's like, yo, you 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 doing it up. Yeah. And then after a while, you're like, all right, I'm going to miss a day of swimming. I'm missing two days. I'm missing a week. No. Then next thing you know, he's like, damn, it's been six months since I've been to the beach. Because, you know, we get, we get, we, I don't want to call it bored, but it's just the novelty wears off. Mm. Right? And everything. Remember how you treated your car when you first got it? All nice and washing it. And don't lean up on the car. Don't eat in the car. Probably didn't fart in the car. And now look look at it. Not that you abused it, but I'm just saying because mm-hmm. it's older. Yeah, it's just how it is. It's like, all right, it's new, it's done. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure, listen, man, go get your pot go get your pilot's license, please. All right. Please. Alright. Maybe this is just content, but I don't know. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. But let's roll. Let's roll these dice real quick. We're just going to do the two rolls, bro. Oh, Can shit. you bust your your uh, bust your fizzy phone out, please? So we do this thing now. Um, sees we try to help people get their love life better. Okay. Right. Because just like we were talking about with the car and the newness of things, it gets mm-hmm. old. So does a relationship, and people don't get inventive. So we have the sex dice. So this guy's a freak. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, for judgment. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to roll the dice twice. And you guys at home, you can go to your significant other and try to do these things on the dice, right? All right, all right so roll one. We're going to eat lips. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, you got an idea? Oh, is, is, is that okay? Yeah. yeah. That's right. So I guess this would be for the, you know... This rule is for whoever. Okay, all right. I mean, that's different. We're going to squeeze above the waist. Oh, that's a nice hug. That's romantic. I like that. So those are your marching orders. Was to eat lips and squeeze below, squeeze above the waist. Mm -hmm. That's different. Mm. A freak, though? Yeah, sometimes I think about how you were saying you want to be a porn director. Yeah. Yeah, I think about that sometimes. That's concerning (laughs) to me. It's, why are you? Why is that randomly coming to mind though? It's different. Why am I living in your head like that? <laughs> I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so when do these thoughts? When does this thought pop into mind though? I, I need to. I need to know. Like, when he's driving the Tesla. <laughs> I was gonna say probably when I come out of the shower, but not in like. <laughs> see, so you went naked Yo, thinking about Brandon right Wood. <laughs> <laughs> you said you walked right into that one. What were the dice about? <laughs> Hey man, listen. Do you not? I mean, do you enjoy the your a porn or two? Like, no, nah, I, I let go of porn. Honestly, I think it's um, <laughs> I think it's detrimental, really. Mm. Detrimental in what way? To um, to men's uh sexual stimuli, like just when they're in bed, when it, when it comes time to actually having libido and energy and desire for your significant other, I think porn could definitely um, destroy that drive, that natural drive. So okay. I think a lot of us are introduced to it very young. And I think that's... Yeah, that's y'all's thing. Because when I was coming up, man, we had to go into the woods and find porn stuffed in the tree thing. Yeah. Was a, what? You, you never heard of that? Like, that's just a thing. Like, it's a joke. Like, <laughs> that somebody would find their brother's or father's porn and steal it. And they would hide it in the woods, like, in a tree and hole somewhere. Knew. And everybody knew. So you go in the woods and you... That's weird. That's very weird. Well, I grew up in the suburbs around a lot of white <laughs> dudes, okay? That was just... Mm. Y'all share the same pages, man. That's crazy. Yo, just looking. Now nah, there was a um, there was a guy. I'm not going to say the names because I would love to say the names, but I'm not trying to incriminate anybody. But there was a there was a family in the neighborhood, in the other neighborhood, where the dad had the dad and the brother had an extensive porn o collection, like magazines, mm. like magazines to the point. <laughs> where you don't think that's problematic though oh it was weird in the 80s this was in the 80s right it was I mean this is all kinds of just it was this is a lot of mag- so many magazines that the, the brother didn't even have a box spring his mattress was held up by magazines and it was high up off the floor right and one day the brother did something to the younger brother who I was friends with and when the brother left my man yelled out the window 
yo, come get these magazines. Yo, kids were flying. I didn't do. I didn't even know where half the kids. I didn't even know them. We all ran into the house upstairs and grabbed all kinds of magazines. Like just raided his brother's. It's kind of fire though. That's a good Yo, story. it was. That's a movie. <laughs> it was a movie. It was frantic. I remember just being like, it was like pages flying all over. It was really, really crazy. And I think I only like got one magazine. Now that I think about it, it was like a thousand magazines yeah. there. And I'm like, I got my one. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, yo? Yeah, yeah but... Where'd, it's you, a, where'd you hide it, though? You know your mom was... in the woods. Was, your people was rummaging through your stuff. They no. was just... Your mom don't randomly just clean no. up and find something? Mm-mm, no. Where did I... I was in my room. It was in a room. And I think, now that I think about it, I think there's magazines stashed in the basement in the drop ceiling. I like, you know... Push the panel Please up, go and, and I gotta it. find them. Yeah, that'd be yeah. funny Hot, though, for some porn. You know what I mean? Like the fact that you gotta hide it, and like, well, I was a child. I mean, I was a teenager. So you, I mean, like even still, I feel like we try to keep that stuff private, and like to 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 an extent to where it's like it's almost obsessive. Like it's like it's it's so. I don't want, I don't want to be down. I don't what? want to be down. I don't um, want like my my mom that. My mom finding it and being well, actually, she wouldn't even do anything. Cause as a matter of fact, <laughs> there was a magazine that was in the house that was not mine. Mm. It was not mine, and it was stashed underneath my mom's bed, right? So I'm definitely more savvy than that shit, right? <laughs> and so she and her friend um, that she was seeing at the time found it, and so they thought it would be funny to write in it like, "Is this what you like, Brandon?" Oh you think no. This right? In the magazine, and like, I it was I, I, it wasn't mine. I didn't even know it was there. Mm-hmm. And then later on, I guess because the magazine hadn't been discovered, um, my mom was like, "They were like, yo, did you see the ma- magazine?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And by this Why time, did I'm a teenager. You were go underneath their mattress. Exactly, because I was the teenager. Mm-hmm. I was like 15, 14, 15 or whatever, and yeah, <laughs> it was like it's not mine. They were like, "Are you sure?" Like, yeah, it is. I'm like, nah, it's not my magazine. I promise you, it is not my magazine. (laughs) Like, why would... I mean, I used to hang out in her room a lot to watch TV, but I'm like, why would I leave something like that underneath your bed? Like, Mm -hmm. that should be in my room where I could actually properly use it. She ruined that shit, though. That's crazy. Yeah. And then (laughs) then it found out it wasn't wasn't my brother's. It was, like, his friend's. So she... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yo, what the hell? That's a cool mom, though. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's 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 whatever. But it's important. It's important to masturbate. There, it reduces your chance of prostate cancer by a third, four to five times a week. Master, like ejaculation. I just think, and nobody gets pregnant. I just think porn itself as an industry is unnatural. You know, mm-hmm. that's not something people had to deal with. Like, you know. In ancient times, I mean, I know like there were like yeah. things that are adjacent to that back then, yeah. like like you know yeah. Romanesque statues of Yo, ladies had, and stuff. Yeah, they if they had to, if they yeah. had the ability to take pictures and print them bitches out, best believe there would be there would be all of that. They would have Roman DVDs and all that. Like man, yo, we are made. We we we're hardwired to be into the smut. We are. We are, and I think, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't embrace that. You know what I mean? Mm. Why not? You you want to? <laughs> I think that's the change that I'm talking about now. That it's been so long. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we have these carnal instincts, these drives, but like, it's, it's, it's you don't have to give in to them. Yeah, yeah. like what? That's it's moderation, that's some discipline. man. Discipline. It's moderation. It's just moderation. I just know people who like who struggle with porn. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I had to like count them and stuff like that. Like, just not you. Not you, you mean, the counselor. Like, let's talk about your porn. Do you lay this shit out in it's front like, of him? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, go ahead. I'm, I'm fucking It's with like you. a men's ministry thing. You know, we all come before each other, um, just mm. laying on down, like, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. That's cool. I, like, anything in moderation, anything in excess is dangerous. All things in moderation. And, like, that's that's just what it comes down to. Yeah. The person that struggles with porn, if it wasn't porn, they'd be struggling with something else. Yeah. Get the wheel, bro. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, like, don't demonize. Okay. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's it's not it's not the um mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the person. It's not the thing. It's yeah, just, everybody's different. Every yeah. But porn, yes. 
I like porn. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, but I have my periods of like I watch it, watch it, watch it, and then I'm like, nah, I'm good. And usually when I get to the nah, I'm good, it's when I find myself going deeper down the rabbit hole to get aroused. It's like, mm. damn, I need to find some right. old extra like now you need the, <laughs> yeah. the dogs fucking and shit. Bro. Yeah, like, oh. not that, but something like this. You know, something wrong. Like, stop, bro. It's like, yo, man, the kind of stuff that after you finish, you're like, you feel ashamed. You're that's, like, that's, damn, that got me off. Why is that even a type? That why even a category? All right, let's spin the wheel. Shot of clock, shot of clock, shot of clock, shot of clock. Stateside. Okay. <laughs> and go ahead, Seize. You're the guest you're supposed to, you're supposed to turn stateside. on. Stateside. Go ahead. Yeah. I called that. Wasn't that impressive? Yeah, I forgot about this. Like, the fact that y'all spun the wheel and... Yeah. It's been that long? Damn. Yeah, it's been that long. That's been a big so shot glass. long. <laughs> um, so, for the culture... I don't have anything, huh? Mm. I don't have anything other than that Happy Women's Month. It's, ha- it's March's Women's Month. Yeah, I saw. So that. let's celebrate the ladies. Okay. Um. So and I apologize. It's been kind of cra- crazy for the kid. Um. So do you have any women's history facts or anything? See, um, other than your advocate against no porn. Women facts. No, not off the top. Damn, am I the guy for that? <laughs> I wanted to ask Rao, did you even know it was National or yes. Women's Month or whatever? Yes, you I did that? March, yes. I feel like that's a new thing, though. Like, it, I, I think it's right. Well, what is it? You push that back, the, the, yeah. the world. Ever since I was back over here, yeah, um, a kid, we've always celebrated. I don't know when it became official. I don't know the history of it. It's but... always been March? Mm-hmm. Always March, yes, apparently. For what reason, though? For the ladies, man. But why Every, March? Here's like, a, I don't know. Because it's 30. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, I don't, listen, it doesn't matter, right? They got a month and they got 31 days. And we got to, you know, celebrate the ladies because they need to. I don't, I don't know. I don't like when everybody got something, though. I mean, women can have their thing. Here we go. All right. Women like, all right. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I'm about to get canceled. <laughs> no, nah, they can't cancel you, bro. They can't cancel you. They can't. This is the culture of Misfits podcast. We just all different. That's why you fit in. It's like them calling that Shang-Chi movie, this is our Black Panther. It's like that new animated Spider-Man movie having an Indian Spider-Man and a right. woman Spider-Man. and a... Inclusion. Right. But like, at what point is it tokenism? At what point is it some sort of like... I, I I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I think by let we'll use a Spider Man as an example, yeah, right? Yeah. Spider Man is an iconic superhero, right? And so rather than a different ethnicity coming up with their own superhero where they gotta build the lore and hopefully it'll work, you piggyback on spite you use Spider Man as the packaging for immediate acceptance and understanding. But then you're just putting a different face to it because it's just easier. It's faster. And how how good does it feel when you see yourself represented in something? It does feel good. Feels really good, right? Yeah. Right. And so when you when they do soup when they do that, when they do Spider Man and everything and you're including people, you're making everybody feel seen and you're making everybody feel feel powerful, in my opinion, in my estimation. And you don't have to like do all that extra work. Like, all right, we got to come up with a superhero. How did he become a superhero? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But we're blah. living in a time now where it's like the industries, the corporations are piggybacking off of the fact that... Yeah, capitalism. Yeah. Yeah, but that it, change is going to happen via capitalism and corporations. Because if that wasn't the case, then change would happen in other areas, but it doesn't. Right? It just doesn't. We can use Beyonce as an example with this country album. Like, Immediately, people were like, "Oh my God!" Right, but then the radio, the country, you know, the stations were like that, right? But as soon as all the phone calls came in, and they realized, like, okay, our our numbers are going to go up, mm-hmm. we can charge more for advertising. Yeah, play Beyonce, put that number one in the spot. Same thing with Cal- Kaepernick and kneeling. That was taboo until they saw that there was money, like people were behind them and they could make money off of it. So unfortunately, that's just how the world works. It's not change only happens when there's money behind it. So once, so yeah. 
I like talking to him. He brings me back to Earth sometimes. <laughs> so a little bit of the history. By eight, sorry, by 1986, 14 states had already declared March as Women's History Month. This momentum and state by state action was used as a rationale to lobby Congress to declare the entire month of March. 1987 as National Women's History Month. In 1987, Congress declared March as National Women's History Month. Mm, Congress did that. And this year's theme, 2024, for National Women's Month is women who advocate for equal equity, diversity, and inclusion. Did embraces cause you to trip on that word? Okay, don't start. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, well, all right, I do have a fact. But first, let's, let's toast to the women. To the ladies. To the ladies. Yes. Thank you. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. Go ahead. Take it down. The first black millionaire, Madam C.J. Walker. Uh -huh. You know what she did? Hair care. Yep. That black she, millionaire. Mm -hmm. She had hair products. She had a salon. What year was this? She was from, ooh, my eyes. Uh, she was born in 1867, and she died in 1919. She was 51 years old. I'm going to find, I think, there was another, I saw another story about a, a lady who was a million, she was black, mm -hmm. but she, she looked white, and she ended up, like, doing whatever. She made millions, and, like, white people were working with her and everything because they thought she was white. Mm -hmm. And then after she made her money and was secure, she's like, yeah, no, nah, I'm actually, I'm black. <laughs> it pissed them off. I'm going to research that. I'm I love that. that. Yeah, so. I was trying to get a fact real quick on the phone, but yeah. I feel like that wouldn't be um, genuine. I no, can, that's, I can, that's it. That's what you just that did. I just did. I mean, I knew about her. I just wanted to make sure she was the first black um, million, woman millionaire in the U.S. She is. There's even a movie by Netflix about her. Where Octavia Spencer plays her. her. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting, like, so she was the first black millionaire off of hair care products. Mm -hmm. Like, and you look at Rihanna, billionaire off of medic, um, makeup, makeup and things like mm -hmm. that. So, Skin yeah, care. ladies, come on. And ladies. you know Beyonce has her new hair care line. Yeah, they upset about that. I don't know nothing about Beyonce. No? Really? Not really. Mm. I like that one song, Be Myself and I. Oh, that's my <laughs> shit. Yo, that, I love that. <laughs> yo, I love that record. I love that record. Yeah. That is such a I cool like the record. I like in that in that video. How she changed Bob or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? She, yeah, I know what you're talking about. She changed a, a lot of that one. Uh, all right. But yeah, I don't know what she's doing now. She's chilling. She's making country music. She she's and the first hair Caroline. She's the first black female black woman to chart number one in country music. What do you mm -hmm. think about them pitting her against Taylor Swift in that regard, especially too? I mean, I ain't paying no attention to that. You don't like when they do that, or what do you mean? I don't. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I, I don't think it's. They're trying to tear one or the other down. They're trying to do it because they don't like Taylor Swift because they don't like her politics. Mm. So you know, and they don't like Beyonce's politics. So it's like divide and conquer. But they can both exist in the same space. Like Taylor Swift has had a lot of number one albums and things like that, but. There have also been other people that had number one albums. And so, yeah, they both had uh, successful tours in the last year, year and a half. So I, I didn't even know they were pitting them each other against, pitting themselves, you know, pitting against each other. They always have. Do you remember when um, Kanye went up on stage mm -hmm. and all that? Yeah, it's yeah. been since then. Yeah. And then <laughs> this last, I don't remember which show it was, but Jay-Z in his acceptance speech said, you yeah. know, how does someone have all these accolades but never has one best that. artist? You know, or I can't remember what exactly he said, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I'm to the point now where it's I feel like I'm really done with trying to participate in spaces and places where my participation isn't appreciated or wanted. Mm -hmm. They don't if they don't care to honor black people properly in the Grammys or Academy Awards, then fuck it, like. All right, we'll just whatever. Like, we'll just whatever, though? Yeah, we'll just whatever. Like, why do we need their validation? I mean, what's next, though? Do we create our own? Do we we can we can create our own, but, like... You know it wouldn't stand. It doesn't... No. We're against that, at least, right? We don't have to. Like... Yeah. Like, we have to stop wanting, seeking validation through their systems. Mm -hmm. If they don't want us to be part of their systems, then, okay, we won't be part of their systems. We're fine. We've, we've been fine without their systems. 
they tap into us. Mm. Right? Capitalism. Oh, we can make money off of that? Yeah. Shit. Let's do some music real quick, and country music specifically. That being the number one genre now, overtaking hip-hop, like, what do you even think about that? How did that even happen? I'm ignoring. Really? Well, how did it happen? Yeah. You have half, more than half the country is listens to country music. Southern, like, you know, below the Mason-Dixon line. Country music's always been big. The only difference is, is that it's just talked about right now. Mm. Mm-hmm. I feel like other genres of music are... I don't know. They always have the headlines more than country music does. You only have it right now because, you know, Beyonce and then Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. And then you have Kay Michelle. And, uh, well, I feel like they were capitalizing off of that, though. The fact yeah. that naturally it already spiked. So here's Beyonce trying to come out with that because the country music awards really pop off when that season comes around. I, I, I get it. Like, I just feel like if you look at just by markets, how many, how many markets... How many big markets are have country music? A lot. Like anything below the Mason Dixon line, there's country bars. There's like it's big across mm-hmm. the country, all the way out to the West Coast. So yeah, country music is always being big, and and they've always done numbers. That's why they dumb country artists are rich. Like they've been rich for decades. They just quiet about it. Like mm-hmm. they don't need to talk about it. There's there's nothing flashy about it. Um, I think what you're what we're experiencing is, experiencing is is the decline of hip hop in terms of its charting. That's why people are focused on it because they're like hip hop has held such a high high um, places in charts for the past 20, 30 years. Now, I mean, what, the first part or last part of this year or last year, they were talking about there was not a number one hip-hop song at all, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which makes sense because this shit sucks. I mean, what's... Sorry, let me, let me take that back. <laughs> the music that is, that is on the major radio yeah. stations and things sucks. Yeah. There's a lot of great hip-hop that's made yeah. that never gets... Mm. pushed but what the sexy reds and the I don't even want to say their names yeah we're gonna put their, put it out there you said like, sexy red that was enough yeah like that part those terrible the city girl thing. yeah I said it Ralph said she's sucking her teeth don't cut your lips they still making music I thought they was done nah uh, I just saw them in my thing um, what's her name one of them just came out with a new song I haven't listened to it yet you listen to it Ralph I'm not a big, um, to be honest, um, hip hop fan. Oh, so he's just throwing narratives. Yo, you be like, it's because I like one song. I love one song by Lola Brook. Yeah. And yeah. Ever that since song. then, he thinks that What's I it? like. Sing, sing it. Sing the song. Go ahead. Sing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, hey, mm-hmm. That I is know my she song. Had a feature on the song. I don't like yeah. when like some other girls rapping. Get out of here. Why? Her friend or whatever you trying to put your friend on and shit. Nah. It was not her friend. It was um, Lotto. I love that was Lotto. Lotto. Yeah, I love Lotto, Lotto and I think um, Carisha. What's her name? My, Miami. What's her name? Yeah, Miami. Miami. Yeah, Miami. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carisha, please. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, um, no, like, do like the records have places. Like songs have places, right? There are songs that just belong in the club. Mm-hmm. When you're in the club, you having a good time. Those songs, certain songs work. Me driving to work in the morning, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear that. It doesn't you don't want to get morning. pumped up for work? It doesn't get me pumped up. It makes me sad for society. It's too early for that. <laughs> it makes me sad for society because and you say I'm right or wrong, the actual performance of these songs are terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, take away the sonics, yeah. take away the simplistic the simplicity of the the tracks or the lyrics, the actual performance. Like, you can't rap on beat. They're not rapping on beat. But don't we have good rappers like Meg? Yes, and... Meg the Stallion, but we're not talking about I'm talking about Sexy Red. I know, I'm but I'm just saying food. there's other people the to girls. represent. Yeah, but they're not getting the, the spins that young... Know, Sexy up, yeah. right now. That's, I mean, because it's, it's sexualized, it's... But no. I, I, my problem is, is the actual performance. Catchy. They, like, well, you don't think this is opening up a new paradigm that like Kanye or Nicki kind of did in terms of like, hey, Nicki was 
showing out for the girly girls. Like, you don't have to be a gangster anymore. Now Ice Spice is coming in. She wanted to talk about the, the stars and the constellations and those girls who want the vibes and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, I know girls who talk like Ice Spice. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. and there's girls who talk like Sexy Red who just ghetto and loud. I don't know. Like, and people like it. That's I, why they're here to stay. It's representation in that way, right? No, but listen, those records, you can go up on my third floor and there's stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of vinyl that are even in this closet here that of records that I will never fucking play or encode or anything <laughs> because it's, it's trash. It's like, it's low vibrational, low type music, right? <laughs> it's, but... I will say at the some of those records at the, the time that they came out, they worked because they were club records. And they sounded great when you're in a club and the sound system is loud and you have some drinks and you've been dancing and then everybody's you feeling everybody's energy. Okay, it's cool. So right, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that shit is no, I love that record. <laughs> that that's a great record. Like, but that record sonically is good mm-hmm. because they're mostly rapping on beat. Yeah. They're, they're, the iambic pentameter is matching with the either on the one, the two, the three, or the four. Sexy red typically is 1.5, 2.5, like three. It's mm-hmm. like, why can't you rap on beat? Why are, like, why aren't you matching the beat? And it's like, that's not the beat. That's not the beat, bitch. That's not the beat. Oh my gosh, we nice. That's the first bitch of the day. Like. Yeah. He's doing it yeah. very well. I know. I just, but you see, he, like when you listen, I mean. Even I said girls today. like a couple of times. I mean, sure, I said woman. Like, nah, I'm going to own that. It's, it's March. <laughs> right. Yeah, you better act right. I know, but I'm playing. It's a playful bitch. Mm-hmm. It's not the disrespectful oh, bitch. Oh, you're trying to clean up. Yeah. Nah, yeah, it's trying to be hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a state like side. Yeah. State yeah. side, I never uh, heard of that. Yeah, no, I just I just want it's just performance. Like, okay, if if the lyrics aren't gonna be nothing, I can live with that because there's a place for music like that. There's a place for silly, irreverent, like mindless music, even though there's a lot of it right now. There's it's out of balance. There's a place for it. All I'm saying is can you just be a good rapper, like a good performer? Can you be someone that can like you can when somebody puts a basic beat, you're actually, your words are landing in the pocket and not over to the left or over to the right. It's and not a lot to ask for. It's but not, who's making right? these people famous? The, re- the, the record yeah. labels. Yeah. And they're pushing their music and people are eating it up, whether they can I mean, rap or not. Yeah, but that's just because of the, the, like the farms. Are you aware of the streaming farms? Do you know what that kind is? Kind of, sort of. Like, they push what they want to push. Invest mm-hmm. in what they want to invest no, in. No, it's like a bunch of people literally sitting together and playing a song over and over again mm-hmm. on, on many different screens and devices. You could pay, yeah, you could give a dude ten, twenty thousand dollars and he's got a warehouse full of devices with IP addresses. And it's just like press playing play. And to then, make those popular. And then it trends, right? And then it gets picked up on TikTok or Twitter, like in the wherever, right? And then people start playing it. So it's, why do we care who's number one and everything if it's manipulated? Because people generally are lemmings. And most people don't know that, right? And then we have this need to be cool and to feel fit, to want to fit in. And it's like, oh, ski is fine. So you create a song, mm-hmm. right? You pay your the label, whoever who's backing you, pays the streaming farms to, to, to get your numbers, your song to show up on the charts. Then you hire a dancer, you come up with some kind of little trend dance and you put it on TikTok and then people pick it up and they're like, oh, that's the next cool thing. And then they want to be cool. And so they do it well. It's just mimicking. But what what shows you true great music is what happens after the eight week or the six week rotation that these songs go through. What happens? Are these songs still played? Are they going to be recurrent or are you going to never hear them again? Mm -hmm. And most of these records you don't ever hear again. You don't ever hear them again. You're not hearing them like 10 years from now. Yo, his breakdowns are crazy. You know he talked to himself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know no music way. is his thing, so. Yeah, yo. I mean, he, he know a lot of shit about everything. Like, just, he yeah. know a little bit of everything. Well, I mean, yo, as a DJ, as a DJ, where you live is your recurrence. Recurrent records are records that have stood the test of time. Those are songs that are familiar, like, you know, the Jay-Z's, you know, I just want to give it to you. The Drop It Like It's Hot. And I mean, I'm sticking to one era, but I'm just talking across, saying across board. 
the songs that you, when you listen to an old school station, the same 20, 30, 40 songs that you just hear over and over, those are recurrent records. Mm -hmm. Those are the songs that, like, as a DJ, you play those records, people are going to dance, and they're going to have a good time. Um, in order to break a record, you have to insert new records in between those that, so people can associate those record, the new records with the old records. If a song is genuinely good, it's easy to do, and the song becomes recurrent. If a song is terrible, guess what? See, it just it flies, it goes away. Mm -hmm. It just goes away, man. It just goes away. There's a lot of trash that's just going away. But there's always been trash music that's going away. There's always. I, yeah. Like I said, I got a lot of records upstairs, man. Yeah, we got to <laughs> wait 10 years and see, like, which one really Shit, mm -hmm. uh, just wait a year. Wait, a two, wait two years. Like, name 10, 10 hit records from last year. Well, I'm saying, like, when once me and Rel become, like, 20 years older, like, what will we be playing from this era then? Make me sweat. Yeah, yeah that's Michelle a lot Tyler. <laughs> well, Tyler. Well, Tyler. Well, pop. Yeah, yeah Tyler. that water, that Tyler, that water record, that's going to be... I'm not saying it's going to shut the clubs down like 20 years from now, but that is... You see how she just rattled that off? It's in her head. Mm -hmm. And it's in my... I, the song is fucking playing in my head right now, right? It's catchy. There's no the baby in my head right now. Yeah, I don't, yeah. There's no little baby. <laughs> There's no baby keen. There's not those. They're not ringing off in my head, and I know their songs. I, it's not popping off. So that those records aren't five years. Not even next year. You know. Oh God. Let's play stupid mm -hmm. games, win stupid prizes. All right. Who's a contestant for today? <laughs> Woman loses, and this is literally. Playing stupid games okay. <laughs> to win a stupid prize. Women, woman loses eight hundred thousand dollar disability case after being seen in a tree oh, throwing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that shit was crazy. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the, the the clip? Is there a clip? No, I just saw the the, the, the um, picture. pictures. Yeah, that's a good picture too. Yo, like, that what? shit look like it's fake the way they caught that. Someone said that that's what they would say. They'd be like, yo, AI getting crazy that's out what here. I'm saying. Like, what? They caught her. Nice. She won the contest or something? Mm -hmm. That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> so, an Ireland wife has forfeited her $800,000 disability lawsuit after photographs surfaced of her participating in a tree throwing competition. Camilla Gr Grabska went viral after photos of her participating in a Christmas tree throwing contest surfaced. However, Grabska should have skipped this contest considering that she was embroiled in a lawsuit with her claim to with her she claimed to be permanently injured. She sued the insurance company following a 2017 rear end car accident. The 36 year old woman reported that she had severe neck and pain stemming from the crash and prevented her from working since it occurred. She also said her in her suit that the wreck preventing her from from holding her young children or regular household chores. Oh, she's scandalous. Grafska had been receiving regular disability payments since the crash. However, she was able to participate in the January 8th, 2018 competition despite the severe injury. Dan, that was a year after the accident. I, mm, mm, mm. She was supposedly suffering from. Um, yeah. The thing I hate about things like this is that people who need the disability, like that money... Mm -hmm. Right, right. They, they have an issue, or you know, it's so hard for them to get exactly whatever they need from. Oh, I mean, just even the harassment, mm -hmm. the harassment. So we have a family member who legitimately got hurt at work. Mm -hmm. Like he could have died had he not been wearing a hard hat. Like a girder came down and hit him in his head, messed him up bad. Right. So he was fighting to get paid. So. <laughs> So eventually they like they do things like have court dates all over the state, like far over here, over there, like just trying to, to mess them up. He attended every last one. So finally, at the end, last one, they sat him down and they had an investigator and the investigator had all these pictures and he was throwing all these pictures up. Right. He's like, who's that? Do you know who that is? And like in every picture, the person in the picture was doing something that they claimed they, they shouldn't have been able to do, like mm -hmm. throwing a Christmas tree, right? <laughs> so he's like, yeah, I know who that is. And do you know who that is? He's like, yeah, I know who that is. Do you know who that is? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, so who is it? He's like, it's my brother. They have been taking pictures of it's his brother. It's the wrong brother. person. <laughs> they have been taking pictures of his brother the whole time. 
thought he had a gotcha moment. And I mean, they look alike except for the brothers taller, mm-hmm. but it's like high, like a lot taller, not like marginally yeah. like. Like, yeah, so he got, he finally got paid. (laughs) Right, yeah, like, gotcha, like, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. (laughs) See, when I hear stories like that, though, the Christmas tree throwing girl, Mm -hmm. I just think about the private investigator. Like, they be on the job. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) well, you know what? He probably, the the, the investigator probably wasn't even there. That was probably, like, if I was having a throwing, Christmas tree throwing event, I would be taking all kinds of pictures. Mm -hmm. And the winner, Mm -hmm. like, that's marketing. Like you know, you want you see the picture, so they probably. Was I wonder Googling. how much she won from how much she won from the composition. I think it was not much. I she think, won money. I thought it yeah. was just for fun. Nah, she. <laughs> well, then that's I even super clout. Right? Well, local city clout. But no. you see how much trouble your cousin had to go through. Right. Like, for and legitimate. then on top of that, you're sick. Right. And then you want me to be going all over to these court dates to defend myself when I really did get hurt. But then you got this girl tra- training for a Christmas tree <laughs> contest, with throwing contest, when she's saying she can't even hold her children. I know. Girl. How the fuck did she win? <laughs> she was faking. She'd been planning this her whole life. She was, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I've had passion. She did this so she could not work, so she could train. That's it. That's it. So, you know. Uh uh So you got you got things or because you know we have time for things. We have time for things. We we just been rocking and rolling, man. Because yeah. you know? I don't know if I want to talk about Fat Joe. Okay, well I don't know anything don't about Fat know, Joe, yeah, but do? I do have a question for y'all. What's that? So I don't know if you guys seen the hot topics going on on TikTok, but there is a woman by the name of Risa Tisa, and she yeah. blew up the internet or shut it down, however you want to do it, uh-huh. due to her crazy flag of red flags yeah. relationship that she had. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> are you team? What's her? Are you team? What are you, are you empathetic towards her? Because I'm gonna tell you, I'm I'm fucking not. No, not even a, not even a little bit, not even a little bit. Are you empathetic to her? I haven't seen what she looks like, but I heard descriptions. And uh, what she looks like doesn't matter, though. I mean, from what I heard, it kind of does. Hey, do you know what he looks like? I mean, nah. See, that's the double standard. <laughs> well, because he hasn't been. Well, no, he. They did find him. I heard they, they did, did find him, him. and mm-hmm. I did see what he is. He, I'm surprised he's still alive. But that just that just compiles onto her desperation. Mm-hmm. You know, like if he looks ugly, I don't. Know. I don't think it's. I don't think she's desperate. I don't, I don't think, think she was desperate, desperate. In a, that way. I, no, not desperate in as she can't find a man because she's not attractive. I think she was desperate because she's looking for a lifestyle, which includes marriage and financial abilities. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's so. It starts. Did you listen to or did you hear the whole story? Do you know the gist of it? I know the gist. Okay. So um, she, I think she was in her 30s, early 30s. It's right before COVID. She met this man on a date. They went on a date and he laid it on thick. But then it was COVID and they, the state was about to shut down. They didn't want to be by themselves during the, the shutdown. So they decided to move in together. They moved into her place. And then everything just spiraled from him lying about his actual job. He said that he was the vice president of production <laughs> and he ended up being a forklift yeah, driver and he was having conversations on the phone with people who did not exist. He's, a, he's just a liar. Like right. every, every aspect of his, of that she knew of him was a lie. Every, every, every aspect. Mm-hmm. There was nothing that she said that she, what she told about the story that indicated any truth about, who or what he was. And that's just the long and shorter. Mm-hmm. And she went along with this relationship from the very beginning, sensing that things weren't right, but still moving forward. But to your point where you're like, oh, it's the financial stability, right? Uh-huh. A part of that is that. But I feel like it was also like the pressure of like her like wanting to settle down. Like she's like, I'm getting older. Mm-hmm. You know, and then someone is coming around saying that they want marriage, like I want marriage, and they're able to provide. It was kind of like the two perfect. She said she was dating with intention. Yeah. So he said he was dating with intention. And he made the point when she asked him, why did you marry me? And she said, he said, because I knew you wanted to get married and that's how I would hang around. Which is, that's the danger of dating with intention. When people say they date with intention, first of Mm -hmm. all, it's a dumb thing to say. Everybody dates with intention. Yeah. 
Right. Mm. Nobody is going to meet their person and be like, nah, son, I'm good. If that's your person, that's your person. It's going to you might maybe you won't you don't get married, but you're not letting that person go. The relationship is going to exist. And if they're not your person, then it doesn't work out. But when you have two people that say they're dating with intention, all that means is that you are going to suffer through the bullshit because you committed to the commitment. Mm. And that's dangerous. That is really dangerous. If that person is not right for you, if the person is right for you, then yes, you're supposed to like commit to the commitment in a relationship. So that's where she, that was the, that was the red flag when she was like, we said, we both said we were dating with intention. I'm like, oh, here we go. Buckle up. So, yeah, I just, so are you, you're sympathetic. Are you team her? Go I'm ahead. sympathetic because I don't think that. I understand wanting to be in a relationship. I understand wanting to get married. And when it's in front of you, you're like, oh, wow, this is Mm -hmm. almost too good to be true. And you went along with it. Yeah. So I understand that part. Uh, Like, um, I'm trying to remember what she said. But she all 55. uh She wanted to have a long commute. Like nine hours. (laughs) But she said she wanted to be the person. She wanted it to be her turn. Like, I understand that. Yeah, she had the pressures but it of was that. Not. She had the pressures of that. She had the pressures of her, she allowing her religion mm-hmm. to to keep her in a bad position. Mm-hmm. But her greed, and it's being greedy. Mm-hmm. Like, so here's my problem. This is, this is my problem with her across the board. So the first thing is, you notice how she kept saying he was cruel. Mm-hmm. He was cruel because he was taking her to these houses that he knew he couldn't buy for her, right? He was taking her to go shopping for cars he couldn't afford, right? I get it. And I'm not even team him. Like, my man got a problem. Like, he's probably living in two or three different demand- realities in his head. This is not just somebody who lies for the sake of lying. No, he's, me- he's mentally unwell, mm-hmm. right? But the cruelness, he wasn't being cruel because he was living out his fantasy just as well as she was living out hers. He, she noticed she never said, this month, they lived together, he paid all the bills. She never complained, said at one point in time that the bill wasn't paid or anything like that. Her bills were paid. He moved in and paid, moved into her spot and paid all the bills the entire time, right? She never talks about anything that she did and contributed to the relationship. Like most of, most of the time when people are upset because something falls apart, the first thing they go to is like, yo, it fell apart. Even though I did this, that and the other, I cooked dinner, I made a nice home, I did all these things. No, there was nothing. The only thing she talked about was the fact that he didn't do this. He didn't do that. No, she said there's. What did she do? She would cook dinner. He they have the thing. I she would buy him it. dinner. She I would know, buy him gifts. But I'm Okay. If, you're, if the man is coming out, it's like, oh, I'm a provider. Right. They're going to pay the bills. Yeah. Right. I mean, and I'm, he lied and said that he could be a provider and he did show up to pay the bills. So what else is she supposed to think? No, but what she I'm saying is, but she, she, wants, she, but she forgot gonna, about that. But yeah, she, that but wasn't. If, if he would have started out not in lie and said, hey, I can pay half the bills, then she would pay half no, of the bills. That's, my point is, is that he paid all the bills to, the, to, to his own detriment, because in the end, his car gets repossessed, which means mm-hmm. that he was paying the bills over pay, taking care of his own personal responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how deep into the lie and the, the facade he was putting on. Like, there was no point was he like, look, you got a job, like, you're going to have to put in. So, in the end, he, he's, when it's all said and done, he has literally the clothes on his back. Literally. We're not talking about no hyperbolic, figurative, whatever. Because he, she wrote in the divorce that anything in the house belongs to her. And he just signed it. He didn't know. But she kicked him out of the house. So when everything fell apart, he was sick. His knee was hurting. There was something going wrong. He was like basically bedridden. He lied about what was he, going on, though. He cheated. He, he, she caught him. She got upset, went to the room, was like, basically, get out or I'm going to kill you. So he grabs what he can grab. He there was piss the bottles of Powerade on the ground. Because he couldn't. He couldn't. <laughs> why is that something? I know. Why you bring nasty. Cause she, I know, but I, yo, he's not He's not well. But well, he's then you need away. to stop lying and should have went to the doctor, <laughs> like she said. I can see there being a lot of pressure on him, honestly, to not... To not only perform like sexually, like as men. No, they weren't having the sex. Yeah, and then he stopped having sex with her, and he was having sex early with Early on, early on, early on, he they, they early on in the relationship, like they stopped having sex. No, it was after they got married, not early on in the relationship. But they got married after real quick. 
But they got married quick. They, they got, got married, married like a year months. later. No, I don't think so. Yes, because they got married after she lost the baby. No. No. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Those are just the... I'm still standing on the fact that he paid all the bills. She kicked him out of the house illegally, right? Mm -hmm. Then she basically swindled him out of all of his shit. He had, like, nice stuff. He had Jordans. He they had, were fake. Like, it doesn't matter. It's still his shit. It, it, whatever, it doesn't matter. When it's all said and done, so she swindles him out of his shit. When she sees that he's destitute, yeah. that he's living out of his car to sign the papers, he gives, she gives him $6 so he can get some chicken nuggets, right? Now, this is supposed to be somebody that you love or loved at some point in time. So you're telling me that with somebody that you had a child, you almost had a child with, that you married with, you cohabitated with, you despite all that, they paid all the bills, you kicked them out of the house illegally, you see them really down bad, and you're just going to give them six dollars. And you know you're taking. You know that when he signs the paper, you're not telling him that all the shit that was left behind, that he left behind because you basically threatened his life and he had to get out of the house. You're not going to give that back to him. And then when it's all said and done, and you find out that yeah, it was illegal for you to kick him out of the house, and he's trying to come back because he's still homeless. You get him locked up. You get him locked up. And then you call the car company and let them know that the car that they're looking for is there. And while he's in jail, they take the car. And what's in the back, in the trunk of that car, were the few things that he was able to get out of the car, get out of the house when he left it initially. Right. Yeah, right is right, wrong is wrong. I mean... that This is somebody that you supposedly at some point loved, right? Yeah, but he didn't love her. He was cheating on her with multiple it women. It's not, about, it's not about whether or not he loved her. I'm saying from her point of view, how he treat, he she treated somebody that she quote unquote loved. Yes, but why, do you, why, does, why should she be held to the same stand you it's know, not above about, that if he wasn't not, showing any respect? Whole time he was lying to her. The, Didn't but tell he was, her truth about one thing, so it doesn't matter. They're strangers. The person she thought she loved is not the person she loved. But human decency, human decency, if you had compassion to give him $6 for nuggets, you should have had compassion to at least let him have his shit. Mm, you should have had compassion to tell her the truth when she that's, said she see, even gave him a chance to say like hey tell me the truth still didn't he's tell the truth sick, but he's sick you're, you're and I think most most people are looking at him as just being an evil person because he's a liar and they're ignoring the fact that he has a mental health issue is that fact? He has to be, see? It has, he was not putting a cape on. It's not like you're putting a cape on. I, well, no, I'm putting the cape on just human decency. Like, I understand her being upset. I understand all of that. I even understand her kicking him out of the house and being angry. But so whose job what is a, it to get him help? It's not about getting him help. All I'm saying it is... It is. You're saying he has a mental he does health have, issue. So I whose know. job is it to get him help? Because it's just going to happen again. Well, since they were married... It was her job. Yeah, since they okay, were married. Okay, she tried, and it didn't work. Nah, no, mean, she didn't try. It didn't sound like she tried. She didn't try. No, she was. <laughs> she didn't try. No, what she tried to do was get a house and get a BM, uh, Audi Q8. And she tried to have a lifestyle that she thought he could put on. And he put... And he was trying to fit the role. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not saying he's wrong. I mean, I'm not saying that he's right. I understand. No, he's a piece of shit. All I'm saying is at the end of the day, as a human from one human being to another, somebody that you were about to spend the rest of your life with, when you see that they're down and out, you don't go ahead and kick them one good time so that they literally have the clothes on their back. No car, no possessions, no drug, no no clothes, nothing, no job. But he paid all the bills for the whole time that they lived together. She didn't even go. They're like, oh, my gosh, she's a victim. The victim of what? Like, other than being misled and lied to over the year. How many women, how many people are in relationships that all that happened, plus they're in debt because their person took advantage of them and they spent money or they borrowed money that they didn't have. When it was all said and done, he's got the clothes on her back. She's moving to an apartment in a county she said she always wanted to live in. Mm -hmm. She had the company car. She got a new job. Yo, life is sweet. And now she's got the story and she's making money off of that. This opportunity. Yeah, she's definitely exploiting the whole situation. Is she? Yeah. I know it's not. It's not like she woke up one the morning and was like, you know, I'm gonna tell this story. I, I understand that the the genesis of it was she was just responding to a TikTok thing, like mm -hmm. tell, because there's ways that she could have done it to if she wanted to make more money. She could have, but she's not too bright. So let's start with that. No, that's not nice. Um, no, <laughs> she's not too bright. That's not nice. 
I don't know. I don't aim to be nice. You've never been in a relationship where there's red flags and you overlook them? Hell yeah, yeah. We all have. Okay. But she overlooked them for a year. She didn't want to face them, really. She, no, she, she was hoping she was letting her greed get in the way. I think when, it's her singleness. All right. But when you, when that first house, so when they went for the first house and he said he put up, they put an offer in on it and then everything, nothing was happening. So then she calls the realtor, right, of the listing when because she looks online and says the house is off market. And she calls the realtor and the realtor's like, yes, it's been sold and, she, and it's somebody else that bought it. She realizes that my man was lying the whole time. Mm. And so her way of dealing with that is like, hey, maybe we shouldn't, you know, we won't we won't look for a house right now. We won't look for a house right now because not because she's unsure of just their financial situation. She just doesn't believe that he has the means, Mm -hmm. but she keeps going with it. Then like the, the thing that blows my mind is the company car. Right. So he, he claims his job was giving $90,000 for a car. He got, that was the budget. And he bought a BMW that he never drove home because they lived in a not so good neighborhood and he didn't want static. So, so my man, Drives the car, I guess, from job. He goes from home to the, you know. Wherever the car is parked. Yeah. And then drives the car to work. The factory. The factory, right? He's a VP of a factory, and they're giving him a company car. Like, what the fuck? But I'm like, so she never noticed that there was not a set of BMW keys on his key ring? Mm. She never noticed that? She never noticed that nothing I mean, I understand the hump paying the bills. That would be something that would keep me off balance, off well. It's like, well, damn, something's got to be working because he's paying all the bills and he's doing it. But it's just little things like that. And that's what I'm saying. Her greed is what got her in that trouble. It's made her stupid, just stupid across the board. And then in the end, like I said, the way she did him in the end, everybody, you know, the common thing for the ladies is that he lied, he lied. I'm like, he lied, but... She treated him like he put his hands on her and beat her down the whole time, as well as the emotional abuse. Again, you don't do just human decency. She left him homeless with just the clothes on his back in Atlanta. There's a it's not just physical abuse. It's It's emotional abuse because he was lying. He said that his daughter had died. His grandmother had died. Yes, but that's like. Yeah, but still. You're lying about some crazy stuff. So what you're saying is somebody lies to you, like you're in a relationship and they're a liar, you feel comfortable with leaving them, like, homeless. It is pretty extreme. It doesn't, one doesn't, that one doesn't balance out way against the other. Like, he, Rel, he's literally homeless. He's got no friends. He has no family, no job. He has nothing. He has because nothing to nobody. Because he's done this to everybody. I, I get that. But she was in a position to at least leave him in a position where he would have a car and he would have some clothes. He would have something from from that. Right. I'm not saying everything that she did was right, but... No, there's you no never, but. There's no but. She's upset. She's mad. People do crazy stuff no. when they're upset and they're mad. So when she kicked him out of the house, mm-hmm. she was mad and upset. Mm-hmm. When she's tricked him, when she basically tricked him in signing the papers, that was yeah, that was calculating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When he came to the house, when he said he was coming back, and then the police said, "Well, y'all are married, and technically, he's 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 supposed to be able to live there." And she did those things. She called and and did all those things. Well, he had Again, a was, no, but it's, it's still. But you she don't know who it you're, it's dangerous. You don't know who you're living Listen, with. I'm not the look, person that you've been with this this year this is, is, this a, is, is a lie. This is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that like oh let him live in the house. I understand that mm-hmm. she called the police if she felt legitimately concerned for her safety. I get that. But after the police took him away. Mm-hmm. And the police officer said he's having an emotional episode right now. Like, mm-hmm. clearly, he's not right. He's sick. He's dirty. He's all. He's in the worst condition possible. They take him away. And then you turn around and call the car people and say his car is here. It would have to gone anyway. Her lease was up. It doesn't matter. She didn't have to be the one to actually fit, physically pick up the phone and call and say the car is here. Come get it. She could have taken the, the, the bags out of the trunk and left them up against the garage and be like, yo, your shit's here when you get out of jail. Right. That's what I'm saying. They like, would have all been thrown away. She left that was the last day of the lease. She put her hand. She made sure it happened. She guaranteed that it was going to happen. Mm. She could have said, "Oh, please, you taking him away? Take his stuff too. Take his bags too." 
he wasn't in his right mind. And that's what I'm saying. Like, nobody, I'm not, I'm not advocating for her to be like, oh, she should have let him back in the house and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yo, she did what she did. What I'm saying is she not only put him out on the street, but she made sure that his circumstances would be as horrible as possible. And it's all because she didn't get to live in the big house and drive it out of Kuwait. We're not talking about survival. We're talking about luxury. She wanted luxury lifestyle and he didn't provide it for her. But, but the cheating does like take another turn with it. Mm-hmm. But they weren't sleeping together. It doesn't matter. They're married. Right. But she said, you remember like early on, she was like, her mom was coming to visit mm-hmm. and then he was already sleeping in a, like as soon as they got married, they stopped sleeping together. Mm-hmm. I remember that part. She said, we got married and we stopped sleeping together. And then and then he was sleeping in a whole other bedroom. No, they were sleep. They were still sleeping in the same bed. It was when he hurt his knee. No. Yes. No, it wasn't because... They weren't sleeping. They weren't intimate after three weeks of getting married. They stopped being intimate. Then he said that he got hurt on the job, and that's why his knee was messed up. Then it turned into... It was an old arena football (laughs) injury. Yes. And that's why his knee was messed up. And he kept tossing and turning in the night, and she couldn't get to sleep. But But then she went through his phone and found out that he was... um, a woman, a lady of the night. What's the uh, escort? He was sleeping with an escort. The escort was sucking his dick. Yeah. It was multiple women that she porn, found out. If he had porn, he's probably would have been okay. He wouldn't have had to need that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was multiple women sh- that he was sleeping but with. But I'm pretty sure... Sh- I, I, so I guess maybe I got it messed up. But I, I'm pretty sure that when his when her mom came to visit, she, he moved back into the bedroom. Yes, because they were putting on a good face right, for the this mother. this was way before... Because she, she didn't tell anybody about what was... Like, everything that happened in their relationship, she kept in her, her relationship because she said she had this mentality of, like, what happens at home stays at home. So she didn't tell anybody. Listen, all I'm saying is her what she did to him pales in comparison to what she he did to her. I disagree. You see, you see the judgment on C's face. You see, looking at you like, nah, you can't. You can judge me if you want. No, but I'm, I'm really in the middle. I really am. I hear, I hear what you're saying. I, I hear, like, I, I definitely agree with, like, dang, she really didn't have to call the car, like, call the, the repo man for them to come get her, the car and everything. But if that's going to be an extra charge to me, because my name is on the lease, the car is going to have to be called. That's not what she was doing, though. She. Was I don't being... know, but I'm just saying. Yeah, but you're you're throwing a whole like other variable in there that's not necessarily a variable. But like, isn't that a variable digging. when you move out? You have to have everything out of the property, or you get charged. You don't get your deposit, whatever, whatever. She could have had the police tow the impound the car. She could have like, and they taken her away, and it's like, hey, can you impound the car? So why didn't they do that? It's the same thing. No, it isn't. I mean, he probably wouldn't have had the money. He would have had a better chance of getting his car out of police impound than he would out of from the repo guy. Because the repo, because the repo company, like they want all the payment. If that is even if they want you to get the car back, mm-hmm. they want you all the payments to get current before you get the car back, mm-hmm. and then tow fees and all that. Whereas with the police impound, it's just the impound fee, lot fee for however long it's locked up. That's way less than what it would have cost him to get it from the repo. It was all out of emotion, though. I can see that. Yeah. I don't like. I, no, I think she just she just mean. I just think I think she's just a mean person. I like I like I get it. And look, I literally I sat there a whole fucking day at one point five speed on YouTube watching clip after clip after clip after you clip. You do that too? Yeah. I just don't think you got her whether we've talked about this before, like um men with money get whoever they want and uh-huh. they'll end up being with a gold digger. Because they want them for their looks, and they yeah. the other side wants them for their money. Right. It's the same thing. There's going to be some type of trade off, or some type of security, whatever it may be in a relationship. And for her, she wanted a provider, and he lied and said he was a provider. But he did provide for her, and that's the part. I think that's the part but that people he are lied. missing. He went above and beyond. Listen, he, the line is lying. The line is lying. But my my point is that he paid. He paid the bill. She never said anything about... Like, she confirmed it. She was like, he paid the bills the whole time we're together. We paid the bills. And she never, at any point in time, like, besides saying, hey, maybe we should not look at the house or whatever, get this house, she never slowed him down. Like, yo, everything is cool. Everything is cool. That same part that you said, she said she didn't want to talk about house or whatever because she knew it was never going to happen. 
Right, but she also, but she was dejected at that point. But I'm, but it still kept going, right? And then it was the car after that. It was like, we're gonna get you the Audi Q8. And she's like, I want the Hyundai Telluride. And he was like, Nah, we're gonna get you BMW, Mercedes. And he had me looking at yeah, the he's car. always he was always her on. he was always egging her arm. But at some point, it's like, yo, just. It rather was a cruel when she was like he was cruel he was being cruel to me as if he was like sitting there right, putting his hands together rubbing his he hands. He was lightly. he was doing things to gaslight her if you want if you want to say that but when he knew about that name, he knew that she wanted a home so he would go look at homes and know that she could never get it because he can't afford it. Right, and she was dumb enough to same go along with the phone. With it. Same with the cars. <laughs> she he would take her on these rides knowing that he cannot afford but it. Get out of that though. That's that's what makes it so crazy. I, but to me, it's not crazy. I keep saying he's not well. That and then he lied living... and said he had this great relationship with his ex-wife and their and her children. And then turns out they don't even have a relationship. Then he lied and said the daughter died. Like he's it's just delusional. Like... But that and that's why I keep going back to the mental unhealth, the the mental health aspect of it, and the fact that. My man was literally, I feel like he was living in li- living in two to three different realities simultaneously. Like, the lies that he was telling was, he wasn't just lying to her. Like, to like I'm just going to lie to her to get over on her. He's lying by having fake phone conversations. Like, he's literally talking to himself at 4 o'clock every morning well, to his concerning. brother. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so when she's like, oh, he's being cruel, like, he was sitting there every day plotting and planning, like, yo, these are the things, I'm going to torture her today. I don't believe that he was trying to torture her. I believe that he was literally, legitimately living different realities at the same time. Like, imagining, like, the fact that he had taken on the basically partial identity of his twin brother. Because his twin brother was the VP of a company, of a condiment company. Oh, really? Yeah, like his... No. His brother was a condiment... No, yeah. his brother just was successful. He, they said his brother was a VP. He was a vice... Mm. He was a vice president. And that's what that's what triggered the thing. It's like, oh. Oh, okay. And so all these relationships that he's talking about, these are the relationships he would like to have with these people. They better turn this shit to a show. I can they need to, yeah. because it's crazy. Wow. Yeah, well. But he's crazy. He's still going online now, lying, saying she's lying, and none yeah. of it's true. <laughs> so the, who they found was the real guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, they found him. And man. his other wives have come forward. Yeah, he's he's, he's he's just not well. Anybody who lies like that is not not well because, other than, I mean, what did he gain out of any of it? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally nothing. Like I'm glad he got back on his on his feet, like enough that he can be on TikTok and lying and shit. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy about that, but I, I I think the lesson the lesson here for people is like, yo, man, like don't confuse love for lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Don't confuse, and a lot of people do that, man. They really they think like those gifts and money and lifestyle that's not love man like Mm -hmm. somebody who loves you is a person who if they got five dollars in their pocket they'll give you four dollars you know and people will turn their nose up to that because it's only four dollars and then herald the per the millionaire that gives them ten thousand well ten thousand to a millionaire is nothing right you know what i mean so it's it's you gotta dig deeper into the gesture than just the the wrapping of it and she got caught up and she was an easy mark. She's an easy mark because she made it very known that, oh, these are the things that turn me on and that's what I'm into. And mm-hmm. so it was easy for him to be like, oh. Yeah. You know. Flashes to her and she'll go along with it. Yeah. I feel like more niggas do that than, you know, we, we even give credit to. Like, mm-hmm. Because it works. Yeah. Because it works. That's what, yo, I, when I had nicer cars, <laughs> It was easy. It was easy to get attention and to have at least have opening conversations with women that I otherwise wouldn't have because because of the presentation. Yeah. Like there, it's like, oh my gosh, oh you know what? But it's like, all right, well, this is what you're probably really into. Like this is not going to really work because you're about lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So don't confuse lifestyle for love, and recognize mental health issues because my man is. <laughs> And listen to your gut. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. Or diarrhea, but well, no. <laughs> I, think, I think you advocated for her well and likewise with you. Yeah. Oh, so where you land on this, man? Well, he claims she's lying. So do I even believe her? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Nah, man. Look. You believe everything she said? 
Yeah, other you people have come forward and corroborated her her story. What was amazing and impressive to me about her was um, how she acknowledged where she messed up or what, like she was. It didn't feel like she was telling a one sided story, you know. Mm-hmm. And I and I, I respected that transparency. I, I it's just to me, she's just a disappointing person because of what she did in the end. And just even the energy that she carried from it, like after the fact, because this is this was years ago that this happened. Right. And she's still like, you know, he's cruel and he did all this. And it's like, but you still you're still like living the life that you wanted to live prior to him. Mm -hmm. Like other than like the the miscarriage, super unfortunate, super Mm -hmm. unfortunate, but actually probably. Mm-hmm. She lucked out, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, in the grand scheme See, of things. See, and, and that's so I know it's it's hurtful though, because she even went on. She lost the baby, right? He was still telling some other like friends and family that she the baby was alive and well. Yeah, like so I know that all. he's crazy, but still, like you do well, it too much. Now. Like he was, you know that he's crazy. He's delusional, <laughs> right? He's delusional. You can't. You can't take someone... If you know a person's delusional, and at this point, at this stage, she should know he's delusional, mm-hmm. right? Even when, right, when she was in the process of divorce, she knew he was delusional because she, at that time, she had spoken to family members, ex-wives, like, everything had unraveled, and she knew this, and she did what she did. And I'm like, yo, you ain't right. Yeah, your whole thing is that she has to be, to some extent, responsible for his well-being. Be, haven't been married. Haven't been married. Not even being responsible for his well being. Just being responsible not to destroy him. Because there's a difference. Being responsible for somebody's well being is making sure that they're fed, that they're comfortable, that they're taken care of. Not being being not being responsible for the destruction is not doing everything that she did in the end after right. he signed the paper. I'm, I'm iffy on the kicking him out, but I get it. But the sign, from the signing the paper on, when she saw where he was, when she saw how bad health he was, because he was, like, losing crazy weight. Like she said, when before he got sick, he was, like, a 3XL. Mm-hmm. He was, like, 6'3". And then by the time the police took him away, he was, like, a size large. Medium or large, yeah. He had lost that much weight. So I'm saying, like, and he, she finished him off. Like, she literally finished him off with, like, calling the police then then having his code car repossessed and like that's that was the death blow and that's like yo that's fucked up to me like for somebody that you supposedly love she ain't never love him she ain't never love him she didn't know who he was well even the person she thought she was she didn't even love him she never did Mm mm-hmm so, and clearly, yeah, so whatever, man. Yeah, it's just based on the wrong things from the get-go. Yeah, she wanted a lifestyle, like, like a lot of people do. So just be happy you're not like a lifestyle-type woman, bro. Are you? Right? No, she's not, because she's self-sufficient. <laughs> I am. She's self-sufficient. Like, she do her own thing, right? Yeah. Cool. Or am I wrong? Did I read you wrong? No, you're right. That's why I would never have fallen for that. Right. Like, that whole time I thought she was very stupid. Somebody trying to sell you up on a lifestyle? Yeah. Yo, this dude has screenshots of his bank statements, like from Google. Mm-hmm. Like he just went on Google, like <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <funny. laughs> and yeah. that's another thing too. Like, um, I love nice things, yeah. but no one could buy me with their money. Like, I'm not a vain person. Like, you wouldn't accept all those... a gift like that? Is that what you're saying? No, she I, could. I could, but I'm just saying, like, there's more to life. Like, I'm not like all things are just vanity. Like a car, a house, that's just vanity. You can lose that tomorrow. So, to me, that thing those things don't hold much weight to me. Like, you can't be like, oh, I'm going to buy you a house and I'm just going to be with you because that's, okay. You could lose that tomorrow. Then what do we have? We don't have anything. So to me, those are not the top important things. Are they important? Yes, but they're not number one. Right. You shouldn't base a relationship off of that. Mm -hmm. Shoot. When did you have the most fun in life? When you ain't have a whole lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, when you don't... You know, most people, like Jay-Z said in his line, had much more fun when I was piss poor. Mm. I was driving my Honda Odyssey with all my friends in the back. Damn, you had an Odyssey? Yeah. <laughs> 1996 Honda Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, man. Damn, mm-hmm. a big one. Yeah. Listen, man, like, the little things, like, yeah. just the, the simple 
this I met a guy um a few weeks ago who was a uh, uh an appraiser, home appraiser. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, asking him like it's his company. I'm like, so what's the most expensive house you appraised? And he was like thirty million dollars in mm-hmm. Villanova, right? And like I just bounced it off of him. I'm like, so is it just me or does it seem like wealthy people are miserable? And he didn't even miss a beat. He was like, they're fucking miserable all the time. He's like, they are the most unhappy people you will ever meet. Mm-hmm. Like they're never happy. They're never satisfied. They're just miserable. I'm like, yep. That's what I. Yeah. Do you want to find out? Of course. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But I feel like when I when I get my wealth, I'm not I'm not going to be miserable because I because I actually understand what makes me happy. Mm, like, you stay grounded. I don't like I view money as a tool to do what I want to do. And actually, I want money so I can just be free. And there's a huge difference between old money and new money. Yeah. So those old money, yeah, then they don't have a sense of value on life or money. Like, the balance between life and money, yeah, mm-hmm. they're going to be miserable. Because yeah. if things don't roll their way, they're like it always good. has, then they're upset. Yeah. And you're not, and you're also not held with new money. You're not held with the values and, and responsibilities of the name of the family. Mm-hmm. Like if you're a DuPont or something like that, right. where it's like you have to hold to these standards of the, you know, grandpa, Paul, papa, you know, like you just can't, yeah. can't mess it up. Like I'll be a billionaire and still be directing porn. Lord, like I don't care. This guy. Right. Like, hey, man, I'll still be at the new beach. Like, psh, what? Because, you know, so yeah, yeah. But yeah, we still gotta do that. What's that? New beach. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all can have fun with that. Oh, you never went? I did. I thought it was a whole. She's you know, backing out now. She she Miss lost Miss the Jones. thing. I know. She just she lost her she lost her uh, her uh, zest, her comfort. Yeah. With it. I feel you. She's like no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go there yeah. dressed. Do it dressed. Yeah. And then you'll be like, all right, well, it's not that bad. Everyone else is just... Nah, Sherry, we've been there. She's been, t- what, uh, twice? Mm-hmm. So you have been, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she got a little looser the second time. <laughs> you know? It's a, I feel like the fourth or fifth time, she'd be, like, all the way in. But I think that's why she's like, no, I'm not going back, because she already knows what we're yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, nah, I ain't trying ready for all that. Yeah, that is hilarious. Mm-mm. All right, let's see. Yeah, anything else or what? No, thank you for listening to today's episode of The Cultured Misfits. My name is Rel. You can find me on Instagram at Rel Traveling. And where can they find you, C's? Yeah, thank you for having me, y'all. They can find me on All Hell C's at Instagram, uh, Caesar Rodney. That's my name here. All Hell C's on Instagram. That's all. And where can they find you? At DJ Silk. Uh... DJ Silk 12 on Mixcloud.com on TikTok, DJ Silk on Instagram, X, Threads, Spill. Yeah, is that it? Instagram, Threads, X, Spill. SoundCloud? What's yeah. up? SoundCloud? No, no SoundCloud. <laughs> I'm banned on SoundCloud. <laughs> okay. I know, right? <laughs> Copyright infringement things on some remixes. Oh, yeah, yeah, assholes. Whatever, SoundCloud. Anyway, thank you for joining us for this episode of Culture Misfits Podcast. Until the next time, we are out. Bye. See you.